Hey guys, welcome back to the book loft of my tiny house. Today I'm going to be talking about five books that I use when I'm putting together the curriculum and the information that I teach for anatomy and body sciences in the scope of our yoga teacher training. These books are a little bit technical, so bear with me here. But I'm going to start with the book that I actually find to be the most user-friendly and the most absorbable to anybody, even if you don't have a strong background in science and anatomy, and that is Anatomy and Asana, Preventing Yoga Injuries. This book is laid out beautifully. It's this spiral-bound book that you can open flat. It's organized really nicely into these columns with very nice graphics and I think anatomy is best taught in a way that's really visual so that you can see what's going on. There's some great information in here about the spine and what movements you're working on with the spine and it goes through the basics of like the planes of the body and the terms of movement. So I got this book when I did my 200 hour yoga teacher training. This was one of our required books and I've held on to it since then because I think it's so clear. So if you're looking for a book to give you a good foundation, even before, in one of my other lists I mentioned, oh, there it is, the Leslie Kamenoff book, Yoga Anatomy. This one is great in terms of the muscles and things like that, but I think the anatomy and asana is a more digestible version and it goes even like a step closer to the basics. So that's why I think the, yoga, the anatomy and asana is a great addition to your yoga teacher training books. Moving on to the more technical ones. The Anatomy of Hatha Yoga. I started reading this when I was doing my 200 hour teacher training and um, disclaimer on that, I was in college, um, I was in my third, no I was in my fourth year of college and I was studying to become a therapist. So I already had a pretty strong foundation in anatomy and the language and like neuroscience and stuff like that which I needed when I was reading this book. So it's definitely not a good basics book, but if you're looking to add some really solid science to what you're talking about, this is a great book. It will take you a while to absorb the information and um, I would have to put it down after a little while because it would make my brain hurt because it uses a lot of big technical terms. But the way that the information is organized, it kind of goes by category. So he's talking about what inversions do to the body, what happens to your blood pressure. That was one of the things I used this as a resource when I was writing my book because he's so good at pointing to the science about why things happen and what the evidence is behind them. So then he'll have an a section about backbending and what does backbending do to the body. So organized really well for the application from what's happening in the science and what we're actually doing on our yoga mat. So very good resource to have. You probably won't want to sit down and read it cover to cover, but you can definitely jump through there and you can see I have little post-it notes all over the place for the ones that I refer to a lot, like the chapter on breathing what physiologically is happening when you're breathing. It goes into detail. So the next one, one is more technical than the other one, and this one's huge, which makes it a little intimidating. Large book. The Physiological Handbook for Teachers of Yoga Asana. And this book is by Mel Robin. This is an older version of it. I know he has a, an updated version with a different cover, but I have my old classic with all my post-its in there because I use this as a resource constantly when I am preparing material for yoga teacher training anatomy. This has, again, a lot of technical information, but there are sections that are a little bit easier to digest, like toward the beginning of the chapter, a little easier to digest as you dive farther into the chapter more technical. So at some point I'll be like, okay, I think I got enough out of that and I'll stop reading. But there's 
really specific dia diagrams if you are into the science and that sort of thing behind what you're talking about, like what's happening in the body when you're breathing, what is the physiological effect of weight bearing on the bones. That was one of the things that I was working on during the last section when I was teaching the anatomy of the skeletal system and we were talking about how weight bearing impacts bone density. The science behind that is all explained in here. So again, not a cover to cover read, but lots of good technical information to make the process of teaching anatomy to yoga teachers really legitimate and grounded in scientific information. The next one is not a yoga book. It's huge. <laughs> so this was my college anatomy book and I held on to it first because it was super expensive, but I actually love this anatomy book. And the reason I think you should have a textbook for teaching anatomy is because it gives you this whole overview of all the body systems. So not just talking about yoga, but um, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the lymphatic system. It's going to go through all of the systems and it's going to give you the science behind how those systems function. And then you can use some of the other books to create that tie between the anatomy and the awareness of the body systems to how those interact with yoga. That's always kind of where I'm coming from when I'm teaching anatomy, tying together how yoga interacts with the body, how the body interacts with yoga. This particular book is human anatomy. It was, gosh, like probably over $200 when I bought it brand new 12 years ago or whenever that was. But this just outlines things super well. And I actually use this as a way to kind of structure and organize my curriculum the way that they have structured and organized the information in the textbook. So that's one of the most helpful things about having that textbook, but it doesn't necessarily have to be this one, but I think everyone who teaches anatomy to yoga teachers should have like a legitimate college textbook level anatomy book. All right, last one, kind of a little bonus. This is another book that I took uh, from my college classes. This was my one of my anatomy books for lab when we were studying the muscular system. And the reason I've held on to this for so long is because it's very clear, right? For as much as the other books are like super technical and a little bit hard to digest, this has pictures of the muscles that you can see I colored when I was studying. I use that very frequently, but they're all mostly black and white pictures like that. And they're super clear because sometimes if you're looking at cadaver pictures or things like that, it lacks the clarity that we need early on when we're trying to really hash out like what muscle is that? What does it do? What muscle is over it? What muscle is under it? This makes it so, so clear that I can show my students in this format and then I can start to show them the more complex pictures once they have a solid understanding of where the muscle is and what it does. So the clarity of the visuals in this book is really the reason it has hung around for as long as it has. So that is the musculoskeletal anatomy, the illustrated essentials of musculoskeletal anatomy from my anatomy lab. And that is the Sieg and Adams version. There's probably an updated version of this. This was from 2002. <laughs> Old. But uh, it's hung around for a long time because I get so much use out of it. So those are the books that create the foundation of information that I use when I'm teaching anatomy and body science to yoga teachers. And I think they will also be helpful to you whether you're studying or whether you're creating a curriculum, those are the books that are going to really help you to get there. And I'll end this video by saying that I'm doing a giveaway of the book that I wrote, which is Yoga Therapy at the Wall. I wrote this book to show yoga teachers how yoga therapy is a very precise and scientifically based process that also honors the subtle body and 
the emotions and the psychology of being human, all of those things can be tied together and how effective using a wall as a prop can be in that whole process. The wall creates a feeling of safety and security, which is a basic foundation that we need anytime we're doing some sort of therapeutic work. You have to have the person in a space of safety and security before progress and growth is going to be able to happen or healing is going to be able to happen. And there's so many different topics that are covered in this book, self-regulation, how to create sequences and sensory input that helps with self-regulation, how we can use the wall for body awareness and proprioception. A lot of content in here. It's a full color manual. The printed version is available on lulu.com, but if you feel like getting a copy of this book would be helpful to your process of practicing, or if you're a teacher, leave me a comment below and let me know why you'd like a copy of the book. And then go over to my Instagram, which is at Laura G Yoga, and send me a message over there and just let me know, hey, I'm interested in getting that free copy of your book. I'm going to pick the winner on May 1st, and then I'll be mailing that out to the lucky person who gets this copy. Not this copy. This is my copy. It's a little worn, um, but I'll send you a brand new copy. All right. Thank you so much for being here.